The Orbit Shot is something I like to use a fair bit when capturing subjects with my Mini 4 Pro. I think it's a great way to show off your subject, and when you add variations to it, you can turn a good orbit into an epic orbit. Hey everyone, it's Mark with Create and Captivate, and I've been experimenting with different orbit techniques recently, and found a few ways using features available on the Mini 4 Pro and other DJI drones that allow me to capture these epic orbits almost effortlessly. So if you consider just a regular orbit, performed manually requires two inputs, a sideways input and a rotation. Keeping these synchronized so your subject stays centered for a full orbit can even be a bit challenging. Now, if you were to add a third input, like an altitude change, and maybe even a gimbal tilt, and try and keep all that synchronized would be extremely difficult. And those are the type of orbits I've been experimenting with. By adding these additional inputs, I can change the perspective throughout the orbit to create some really cool shots. Depending on your subject, a simple orbit may be all you need, and that can easily be accomplished manually or using the point of interest feature. But what if you want to get more creative with your orbit, like showing your subject from different angles or revealing the landscape behind your subject? Manually doing something like that gets much more difficult. And I found the POI feature gives you very little flexibility when it comes to gimbal control. And I'll show you what I mean. So I have my subject selected, but I want it to be more centered. So I can tilt the gimbal to reposition my subject in the shot. But when I select POI and start the orbit, the gimbal automatically readjusts and really I have little control over it. And that's what made me decide to try using Spotlight instead. This way I could position the gimbal how I wanted and just move the right stick in the direction I wanted to orbit and now it's doing what I wanted. But before I tried any of these features, I was first trying to establish the orbits manually and then use cruise control to maintain the orbit allowing me to add additional inputs. But it would often take a lot of effort just to get a nice orbit established. One thing that did help was changing some of the settings in the gain and expo tuning, which I will show when I go through the setup. But basically, I would just get an orbit started and then set the cruise control. And once it's set, if you first return the sticks to the neutral position, you can then add small inputs to correct the orbit and then tap the cruise control button again to update the settings. I found it easiest to use the left stick to increase or decrease the rotation, but the problem with this was I would have to maintain the same distance from my subject or I would throw off the orbit. So that's when I decided to try combining cruise control with spotlight mode, and it worked. So now I basically had the POI feature, but with much better control of the orbit and the gimbal. And unlike trying to establish the orbit manually and then setting the cruise control, all I needed to do was get my subject selected and just move the right stick in the direction I wanted to orbit, set the cruise control, and that was it. Now, getting the subject selected took a bit of figuring out. Because my subject was a fairly large building, I would draw a box around it and then start moving in either direction until I got the position marker, which is essentially the center of the orbit. But I was trying to select the building from the side, which always ended up giving me a position marker on the side of the building, no matter how I drew the box. So I found if I got above the building, looking down from a high angle, I could draw a box in the center of the building, and then I would get a position marker close to the center, which is what I wanted. Now, going right over top looking straight down didn't work so well. The drone would actually kind of get stuck there, and the controls would just cause the drone to move in random directions. So being off center a bit works much better. But now I could have the drone orbit the subject and stay locked on that orbit no matter what inputs I gave. So I'm going to go through a few examples of different variations I tried that produce some pretty cool results. But really, this is just to give you an idea of what can be done and how easy it is because as you'll see, the possibilities are almost endless. So let's go into the screen recording and first I'm just going to get everything set up. Now the settings I mentioned earlier were in the gain and expo tuning. So I'll go into the main settings by tapping on the three dots in the upper right corner. Then I'll select the control settings and scroll down to gain and expo tuning. Now in here at the top, you can choose the mode you want to set up. And I was just using normal mode, which is already selected, so I'll scroll down a bit, and the first setting I want to change is the max angular velocity. 
and I'm going to drop this way down from the default to something like 35. This will slow down the rate of rotation, making it much easier to match the sideways and rotation inputs when manually establishing orbits. And then I'm going to go all the way down to the gimbal settings, and I'm going to lower the max tilt speed to something like 5 degrees per second. And I'll also add a bit of tilt smoothness. Both of these will help keep the gimbal movement smooth when manually operating the gimbal. And that's all I was changing as far as settings, so I'll get out of here and I'll scroll down a bit further to button customization. And I want to go into here because this is where I'll set up the cruise control. So by default, the C2 button is set to switch between portrait and landscape mode. That's the button I'm going to use for cruise control, so I can tap on the C2 button selection, then I'll need to go to control options, and down at the bottom I can select cruise control. Now cruise control is set to the C2 button, so I can get out of here, and now I'm going to go into the camera settings. And there's one more thing I want to do in here. So I'll scroll down to the grid lines, and I'm going to turn these two on, just to help with framing the shots and keeping everything lined up. And that's all there is to set up, so let's get into some of these examples. Now, although I felt I had better control of the gimbal using spotlight mode, I certainly didn't have full control. The only way I had full control of the gimbal was when I was manually starting the orbits and using cruise control to maintain them. Like in this example here, where I start with the focus being on the subject, and as the drone comes around, I can start to tilt the gimbal upward by pushing right on the gimbal dial which creates this reveal type orbit and ends up with the subject now at the foreground of this vast landscape. And for this type of shot, I want the gimbal movement to be slow and smooth, which is why I made those changes to the gimbal settings. Now I can finish up the shot by slowly tilting the gimbal back down to bring the focus back to the subject as the drone comes around to complete the orbit. Another sort of reveal shot you can do is start with an orbit close to your subject, then slowly start to pull back, and when using spotlight mode, the gimbal will automatically tilt up to follow the subject, and the drone will continue the orbit. The only input I'm giving is a slight downward or backward movement on the right stick. Now, if I were to do the same motion at a lower altitude, it would create a totally different perspective, and that's why I said earlier the possibilities are almost endless. But to finish up the orbit, I can reverse the input to a slight upward or forward input on the right stick to move back in close to the subject. I also want to show something similar to that, but a bit different, because this time I'll start from far away, and by just pushing forward on the right stick, I can start to move closer to the subject, but as I pass by it, I'll add a slight backward input to the right stick and start to pull back away from the subject to kind of create an elliptical orbit. Now, having a nice background with something like a setting sun always helps, and these are great shots to show it off. Now, before I get too far away, I'll push forward on the right stick again to keep that elliptical orbit going. This actually works well if you want to create a boomerang type shot. But now we're going to do something completely different. So I'll start with a nice low orbit and slowly start to increase the altitude. Once again, this only takes one input from me, all I'm doing here is pushing up on the left stick. And as the drone climbs, the gimbal will automatically tilt downward to keep the subject centered in the shot. I think this is a great shot to show your subject from different perspectives. I started this orbit with a straight on view of my subject and transitioned to a high angle shot, all with one simple input. And now I can start to reduce the altitude by gently pulling down on the left stick, and as the drone comes back around to complete the orbit, the shot will transition back to the view I started the orbit with. Now, once again, there are so many variations you can do with something like this, especially if you combine inputs. And that's just what I'm going to do in this next example. So I'll start with a similar low orbit, and then start increasing the altitude. Now, in all the previous examples, I was just using a single input, but this time I'm going to add a second input. So I already have the up input on the left stick, now I'll add some forward input on the right stick. This will create a transition into a top down shot, but once the drone is over top looking straight down, you want to reverse both inputs and start pulling back and down, and the idea is to try and make that transition as smooth as possible. 
I find this one can be a bit tricky when coming out of the top down and trying to get a smooth transition into that downward spiral. It's just trying to find the right balance between the two inputs. But if you can keep them fairly coordinated, you can have the drone transition right back to the low orbit you started at. Now, all of these examples were just different shots I captured while experimenting with these orbits. I would often just hit record and try a bunch of different things. And something I found out from doing this is I could often capture a really good shot, whether it was just the subject itself or the subject with something in the background, and it didn't necessarily have to be a full orbit. But at first, I was just trying to set up and capture a specific shot, but I quickly found out that things like timing of transitions will take a few tries. And that way, with the camera just recording, I could repeat a certain shot and each time make the changes I felt were needed. And these last clips I've been showing are shots I captured while just letting the camera roll. So I hope this has given you some ideas for things to try. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not already, consider subscribing. But most of all, get out there, try some of these, and see what you can create. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.